First of all, congratulations, Mr. Rana, I'll start with you. Uh, in a time when everybody is complaining of economic slowdown, you have again just put on a new thing, you know, the partnership with Money Grant. What does this partnership mean uh, in terms of an overall structure of uh, economic, you know, giving a boost to the economy? And for EBIX, what does it mean, this new partnership? You know, if I can first comment on this economic slowdown, because it's been a uh uh, misused topic in India. India is still growing at 4.5%, which still makes it the number one fastest growing economy in the world. Also, we're a real example of, you know, new money coming into India. We brought in a billion dollars of new money into India, already poured that billion into India in the last 24 months. So, I, when, so this is a hyped up topic. Uh, I think it's a relative, if I hear, heard the word, a recession, I think it's a terrible word because some people are using it and the reality should be that there's a relative slowdown from that 75 or 8 percent that India is aspiring for. Um, having said that, this partnership is another step in that direction to, you know, I think the government is, is taking all the steps to revive the economy. Partnerships like this help the government in its goal. We are, uh, we were, the partnership is about bringing in new money into India, uh, getting that money from, MoneyGram has a reach in 200 countries today, and bringing that money from 200 countries possibly, you know, any of those 200 countries into India, and having 320,000 touch points that EBIX Cash has in India, and having that, bringing value to the consumer in minutes, I think that's what this relationship is all about. And then that relationship automatically translates into the trickle-down economics of creating jobs at the lowest denominator in terms of villages and the, at, because our franchisees, as they grow their businesses with us, will need those people to handle their business. So what was the catch for this partnership when you uh, went on to doing this partnership? What was the main highlights that you looked at or the main attractions of this team? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're one of the leaders in, in cross-border remittance, um, and our network is really only as good as the partners that we have, right? So we, we have 350,000 plus locations all around the world, and that spans 200 countries. But I feel like we were underrepresented in India. I feel like India was a market that we had a huge opportunity to do something very different in, and it was an opportunity for us to greatly expand our presence and transform who we are in, in, in the market. And to do that, you have to think about all the villages, all the cities, all the people. You have to think about where that money's going to go and how convenient it is for consumers uh, to, to pick it up. And so when I think about the Indian market, it's a complex one because uh, it is so vast and there are so many people. And so EBIX Cash is really the leader today in those in those end-to-end -end touch points. That last mile makes all the difference in the world. And so for us, uh, thinking about how do we take on that Indian market in a very different way? How do we represent our brand just totally differently in the market? Uh, Working with EBIX Cash is just the perfect tie-up for us. So in terms of profit structure, how does it work? Well, it's an exclusive partnership, basically. So uh, MoneyGram um, and EBIX have gone into this exclusive relationship whereby, uh, you know, EBIX goal is to uh, establish, as a first step, uh, 100,000 touch points for MoneyGram all across the country at the last mile. Um, so, a real example of that, you know, from perspective is that somebody in one of these 200 countries hands over money and in a minute that transaction should be handed over in India, whichever part of the India the consumer is traveling in, the recipient is. This is what this entire part relationship is about uh, in terms of creating this strategic relationship. For MoneyGram, how big is India when it comes to international remittances, for example? How do you see India as a market? Yeah, well, India, for the remittance industry, is, is the single largest market in the world. I think uh, remittances exceeded $80 billion last year alone into India, which is a remarkable number. Um, a lot of that is coming from uh, markets like Saudi Arabia, like uh, the UAE, Qatar, um, all of the GCC, the U.S., and Europe. And these are all markets where we have incredible network on the MoneyGram side. So, you know, for us, um, India had a great year uh, in 2019. Um, India itself as a market for remittances had an amazing year last year. So uh, it really, for us, it's the opportunity to, to double, triple, uh, and even push further the size of our, of our business. Our aspiration is to push an incremental $3 billion uh, into the Indian market through this tie-up. And so um, 
you know, to make that happen uh, really requires a lot of strategic ingenuity and thinking. Uh, I think both companies are leaders in digital platforms. We're leaders in our technology. We think about consumer experience and how technology can help influence that first and foremost. And so um, the wonderful thing about it as well is that it's, it's a bit of a symbiotic relationship. You expand on the receive side, you expand that network, you get the touch points increase on the send side as well. Partners in Saudi Arabia want to partner, partners in UAE want to partner, new people come in. So it, it builds on itself. And, and uh, as I would say in the US, it is a bit of a snowball effect. So as it goes downhill, it gets bigger and bigger. So, you know, to, to really increase you know, the value to, to, to Indian consumers, you need everything, you need both. Uh, and I think Epix Cash and MoneyGram bring that to the market in a, in a big way. And you'll see a lot more about that as, as this relationship expands and from a strategic perspective. Perfect. So as we enter the market at a point, do you think the remittance uh, ecosystem has all evolved to a level where uh, Epix will have a great advantage? Or is there a lot to do still in the ecosystem? Of remittances. You know, uh, it all depends on how you bring in new technology, how you digitize with the blue bar and stuff like that. And India is, uh, has a long way to go in that area. Uh, look, if somebody can make that happen and take the remittance industry forward, we believe we are we are best suited to do that simply because we're already the dominant leader in the market. Uh, we already handle six and a half billion dollars of remittance money in India. We have all these touch points out there. We're already a big player in artificial intelligence and, you know, in, in cloud technology and so on. Now about digitization, we probably have uh, the most amazing number of payment solution products. We can handle a transaction, take it on a plastic card, we can take it on an e-wallet, you name it. We have, we have special approvals from RBI to, for example, when you're bringing money from abroad, you know, uh, and you're left with X amount of dollars in your, uh, which by law you're supposed to actually uh, give back at the airport and mm -hmm. now we have a special approval from RBI wherein you can put it on a, uh, on a card, plastic card and then spend that money within India wherever, in whichever way you want. So we have been very, we've been, we've been creating innovative products mm. and so has MoneyGram been doing that on uh, in each of these, uh, you know, in each artificial, whether it's artificial intelligence or cloud technology and it's trying to, it's ultimately about bringing value to the consumer, which is what MoneyGram is trying to do, and we're trying to do the same. So so having said that, when you're looking at the overall market or remittance, like, look, the market is growing. As he said, the market has continued to grow. Last year was 80 billion, right? And if you look back a few years back, it was 59 billion dollars. Mm. So the market has continued to grow. And as Indians, if as more prosperity is happening in India, Indians are also starting to travel a lot more. Indians are starting to be in different locations all across the world. And as they, are in, as they have more money, right, they're remitting more money into India. And, and India still has the, one of the biggest labor components in the country. Mm. As, you know, as Middle East is growing, as countries like Qatar go in and say, look, I'm going to do, the, for example, the Soccer World Cup, right, the amount of uh, the employment it generates, who's the direct recipient of that employment? Indians, who are landing up in these countries in Qatar or Dubai, if you look at what's the population of Indians, it's mind-boggling, right? Labor class. And what does the labor class do? They go to earn money and they want to send it back to their families. And and that's part of that's an evolved evolutionary phase. And we think we're well suited to do this because both the companies are international, also with the reach that is out there, we feel that we can handle that in the most effective manner. Two last questions. One is, uh, there's also a lot of competition in this market mm. at the same time. So what would be the unique uh, product placing in terms of, you know, how would, what would be the unique uh, thing of this deal uh, that would yeah. attract more? I mean, how do you see it individually? And both of you, same question. Okay. Well, I can start on that. I mean, for me, it's all about the customer experience, right? So it's customer experience and it's the value that you create with the, with the transfer. And, and to me, it's been a huge investment in really thinking about what does a customer want in a remittance? What do they need to rely on? How do they feel good about that transaction? So we've spent millions of dollars reinvesting in our technology platform so that consumers see and feel a very different money gram. We've also invested heavily into our partnerships as well around the world so that consumers have the most dynamic way to transact with us. So we've expanded our cash position and our reach in the walk-in space. And we've also invested, so we're now in 65 markets for digital transactions as well. So the ability for a consumer to interact with MoneyGram has completely transformed. And we're also tying the sender and the receiver together in different ways through 
mobile and, and telephony and other forms of communication, SMS, et cetera. So when a transaction is delivered, the consumer knows that the transaction has been received and picked up. And so we're bridging both sides of the transaction and really just creating that differentiated experience. And then I think on the, on the same token, when you think about an eBix cash and the strategic partnership we have, we're also ensuring that those touch points exist in the market as robustly as possible so that everyone is sure that when they partner with MoneyGram, they send to India, they know that they can get that money easily, effectively, efficiently, and at the wonderful rate, and making sure the rupee rate is always the right one because you guys are always watching so carefully. So uh, I think you'll see some wonderful things from MoneyGram going forward. And uh, to be partnered with an innovator like Ebix Cash with the amount of thought that they in leadership they've put into technology and, and just the consumer market here in India is, is, is wonderful to see. Same question. So the seamless customer experience yes. is what you say. I think I endorse everything that Alex said. Uh, just to add to it, I think it's, uh, it's ultimately about how do you, uh, how do you, how do you in innovate in the market? Mm. How, do you, um, how do you give the consumer the best possible experience? That's what this partnership is all about. I think um, when you uh, look at competitiveness, it's less of an issue from a market perspective. What is in its industry, it, you don't really fight you know, the competitiveness becomes less of an issue, especially at the recipient end. So the bigger issue here is how do you provide the consumer the most, the best possible experience, the best possible experience in terms of, you know, not only speed, but in terms of efficiency, right? Mm. And in terms of value. And that's what this partnership is all about. Right. 2019, we saw some great uh, acquisitions. And in 2020, what is lined up for eBix. What is Mr. Rana thinking for 2020? I think I'll, I'll say something, which is we're just getting started. Mm. Um, this is not the end point of where we needed to be in terms of acquisition. Uh, we're just getting started. Uh, we took a little bit of a break simply because of the fact that we needed time to not only integrate but bring efficiency into everything we did. We don't just love buy companies and leave them separately. We integrate them, we centralize services. And as you do those things, uh, you, and then we create an organic path of growth. Once you've done that, then you go to the next step. And that's the step we are at now. So you're going to hear uh, about a lot of acquisitions, both in the Middle East, America, Canada, London, India, uh, all actually centered around India. Uh, ultimately, even if we made an acquisition in the US, in the financial sector, for example, it will still be in with the same intellectual property, EBIX Cash, and it will ultimately flow under the EBIX Cash structure uh, back to India. So this is for me a dream pro uh, project. I want to create India's first large financial MNC, financial exchange MNC. If you look at the Indian market, even in the software industry for that matter, We've had great players like Infosys and Wipro and Tata, but, but they've been doing consulting work. They haven't created intellectual property and become the next Microsoft or the next Oracle. Ebix Cash has a different goal. Ebix Cash wants to create intellectual property that's centralized in India, have the management skill power centralized in India, and then we want to go global with that Ebix Cash name. If we are able to do that, right, we would have created India's first financial software MNC. Uh, you know, we have seen a great company in the in the scooter sector like Bajaj or Honda, Hero Honda, uh, Honda for example. You know, the Hero, Mahindra. sorry, Hero for example, Mahindra's in tractor industry. Hmm. But you really haven't seen much in the software industry or in the financial exchange sector. So this is what we are aspiring to do. For me, that's. Uh, you know, I, I carry a U.S. passport, but I have an Indian passport here. So, I, I, for me, that's the dream project. I, I'm a big believer in the Mr. Modi's Make in India thought process, and I want to play a role, my small role, in the growth of India as we look forward. Hopefully, we see more Indian companies with global yeah. footprints with this, I'm sure. I hope so, too. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Great you. Talking to you. Thank you. Pleasure.